morning. The last class we talked about some ethical problems these days, and we talked about the problem with human failing and the wrong corporate culture. We look at the example of the subprime mortgage crisis there. Did anybody watch the movie Inside Job? Not yet, you're waiting, waiting until the weekend to watch it. Okay. So today we're going to talk, start talking about uh, doing what is right, doing what is correct, doing the correct thing. So doing what is right means not caring only about ourselves, but promoting the welfare of others, promoting what is considered valuable. So we saw in the class last week that some people didn't do, some actors didn't do the right thing. They just thought about themselves, okay? And just their own getting money, right? And they didn't think about the problem we could have for other people. Right? So, in business, we should think about our own career, our company, and also social welfare. But, these things can be in conflict. Sometimes what's best for our career is not best for the society. Sometimes what's best for society is not the best for the company. So there can be a conflict here. So, we are going to learn a framework with principles to help us to make the right decision, to do the right thing. This is a picture of a framework. So we can't make uh, a rule book which says, if this, if this happens, you follow this step exactly. Okay? We can't make a rule for everything. So we have to use this idea. So we, we have a framework of principles. Do you understand principle? Principle means uh, like guidelines. So guideline helps us to make a decision. So first of all, let's look at neoclassical economics principles. So have you ever heard of neoclassical before? Neoclassical economics? No? So the main component of uh, neoclassical economics is Milton Friedman, a man called Milton Friedman. So in this case, people have preferences between outcomes. Individuals should maximize utility and firms should maximize profits. And people act independently on the basis of full and relevant information. So here, firms maximize. Firms just should concentrate on maximizing their profit. So this is a narrow framework. Narrow means it's not very wide. Just everybody focuses. Individuals focus on their own benefit, getting the best thing for themselves, and companies focus on profit. It suggests that if we maximize profits for shareholders, then the company does the best for themselves and we can promote overall welfare. So how, how can that work? So let's say that I'm a company, I make a big profit, 100 million, so I can create jobs. Okay? I also pay taxes. So it helps the community. Do you understand? So this idea is just the company should just focus on making a profit. If they make a profit, then later they create jobs. Creating jobs is one thing that politicians are all very concerned about. Okay? And the company pays tax and the workers pay tax. The tax can be used to pay for health and education. So this is just maximize the product. Profit. But this is another principle, it's a stakeholder oriented principle. 
This is stakeholders. So we saw the word stakeholder in the last class, but this stakeholder is an important word for this class. Here's the company, and here are the stakeholders of the company. So stakeholder is anybody who has an interest or connection with the company. So we can see inside the companies, internal stakeholder, employees, what's another word for employee? Work. Managers, owners, <coughs> stockholders are also owners, okay? Outside the company, suppliers, society, government, what does creditor mean? Who is the creditor of the company? Does anybody know? Creditor lends money. Somebody who lends money to the company. Okay. Uh, customers. So this, according to this framework, we should consider all of these people. So the first framework is very narrow. The company should just think about itself and its owners and making a profit for the owner. Okay. But so stakeholder oriented means we need to think about everybody. So let's first look at the neoclassical account. So Milton Freeman is the main proponent. He says there is only one social responsibility of business. To use its resources and engage its activities designed to increase its profits. What are resources of a business? Can anybody give me an example of resource of a business? Yes, people are resources. Another resource? Money. Okay. So they should use their money and people and energy and they should try to increase profits, like we said here. Okay? What's the only limit? The only limit is stay within the rule of the game. Have the open and free competition without deception or fraud. So don't break the law. Okay? Just don't break the law, don't deceive people, don't do fraud, and uh, try to make profit. So, discuss with your partner. What do you think about Milton Freeman's idea? Do you agree with him? That just the company should make a profit and stay inside the law, keep the law, right? That's the only responsibility of the business. Do you agree with him or not? So discuss with your partner. Because the company should keep the law and make profit. That's the responsibility of the company. Do you understand the question? Do you understand the idea? The narrow idea? The company's job is just don't break the law and make profit. Okay? Do you agree with him? That's the responsibility of a company. Milton Freeman, the business should just make a profit and keep the law. Hands up, who agrees with that? That's the responsibility of the business. Okay, hands up, who doesn't agree? Who doesn't agree? So, why don't you agree? What other responsibilities do you think business might have? What's that? 
Yes, what does that mean? What do you think? They can donate money to charity or help society in some way? Okay? So, question in this, if we agree with Milton Freeman, the question is how can we link these profits with the social welfare? Okay, so we said we can say they create jobs or pay taxes. So, there's a key point of capitalism which is Adam Smith wrote about being used here, which means that individual preferences define the advantage for the individual. And the collective advantage is the sum of the individual advantage. So people will only engage in transactions that they see as in their own interest. And so individual pre preferences will be maximized. So just to explain this with a story, this is the difference between communism and capitalism, right? Do you understand communism <clears throat> and capitalism? How do you say capitalism? How do you say communism in Korean? <coughs> North Korea, right? How do you say capitalism? That's South Korea, okay? Which economy is doing better? North Korea or South Korea economy? Why? Why do you think South Korea is doing better? North Korea. Anybody? No reason? Is it related to capitalism and communism? Why a lot of communist countries failed, right? So under the communist system, everything is free, right? So you get free housing. Do you want to get a free house? Do you want to get a free house? Yes? Free healthcare, free everything, free education, right? Everybody gets the same salary. Okay, so I give you a free house. Are you going to work hard now? Or just sit at home and enjoy your house? What are you going to do? Take the free house. Are you going to work hard in your life? Yes. Yes? Why? Why are you going to work hard? You already get everything for free. And even though you work hard, it doesn't make any difference to you. <coughs> you still get the same salary, no matter if you work hard or not. Everybody gets the same salary. Do you understand salary? Yes. You still have a free house. Are you going to work hard? No. no why not? <laughs> what? Hard. You don't want to work hard, no benefits, you don't see the benefits, right? So this is what Milton Freeman is saying. People only engage in transactions that they see as in their own interest. Okay, so you're only going to work hard if you see that it's in your own interest. Okay, in capitalism, you're going to, you don't have any house, so you have to work hard to get a house. Okay? And you don't get free anything. If you don't work, you don't get any things. If you work, you get something. Okay? So which society which society is going to be have a higher GDP? Communist society or the capitalist society? Capitalist society. Why? Because it can give some motivation. Hmm? It can like, make people work hard. Why do people work hard? Because as much as he works more. Mm -hmm. Yes, so this is what this is saying, right? The collective advantage is the sum of the individual advantage. Okay, so the country is the sum of all the individuals working together. Okay? Here the individuals are working hard because they see some interests, their own interests to working hard. Okay? Here the people are not working hard because they don't see their own interest in working hard. Okay? So here the collective is actually better by people thinking about their own interests. Do you understand? Another example was when some of the first pilgrims went to the United States. They started this kind of system. Okay? 
where they landed in the United States in, in 16, let's say 1680. Pilgrim is people who went to the US at the start from Europe. Okay? They decide to share everything, share all the food at the end of the year. Okay? So the people didn't work very hard because they're going to share the food equally. So at the end of the year they didn't have enough food and some people died from starvation, not having enough food. Okay? The next year the same problem. So after a few years they decide to make this kind of system, private property. And you only get the food that you work for. Okay? So then the people start to work harder because they know if they don't work hard, they don't get enough you know, food. Last year they didn't work hard, but they still got food, right? Because everybody shared the food at the end of the year. Okay? So in the end, nobody died from starvation this year. Okay? Because they all made the food, and then maybe somebody did some charity. Somebody worked very hard, but they had some problem, they only have one arm. Okay? So then we use the charity to solve that problem. Okay? So nobody was starving this year. So this is this idea that mil uh, from neoclassical economics, right? That people act in their own interest. So people, who act, if people act in their own interest, Adam Smith said, if the candle maker and the butcher and the baker all act in their own interest, try hard for themselves, then it's better for society. Okay? Do you understand that idea? Okay. So. We, they use this idea for the companies too. Companies just think about themselves and improving themselves, then it's better for everybody. So in this case, managers are going to try and get their product and service efficiently to the people who want to pay for them. This satisfies the consumer preferences. So the customers are happy too, right? The shareholders get some return on their investment, they're happy. <coughs> Successful companies attract capital from the shareholders and we said they create jobs and pay taxes. And we have this maximizing of collective preference, satisfaction, so everybody should be happy in that case. Okay? He says, you said managers can do some donation to charity or something else. He says no. Managers are the wrong people to solve the society's problem, like crime or poverty. He says managers have no training or expertise in this area. So it means that managers are not going to do this efficiently due to favoritism. Maybe you make a donation because your family was sick with cancer, so you make the donation to the cancer charity. That's favoritism. Do you understand? Because you have that manager and you just do favoritism and you don't know about what society needs, really. Okay? You just give the money where you think you want to give it. So, there are some criticisms of this idea. Okay? He, said, he doesn't explain about moral rules or ethics, just they should keep the law. Okay? And he has this idea based on preferences, also has some philosophical criticism. And if we want profitability, it means managers don't think in the long term. They just think in the short term. And also, managers uh, have shown that they can be effective. He says managers are not effective at helping these problems. But managers can be effective. So he has some criticism. So the main criticism of this one is that it makes the companies focus on short term. Do you understand short term? How do you say short term in Korean? Dangi. What's long term? Dangi. So the problem is this company is just thinking about short term in this case. Okay, they're not looking at long term opportunities and risks. So these days people don't follow the, the, this Milton Freeman's neoclassical model because of this problem. Focus too much on the short term. We're going to look at later about balanced scorecard as an alternative. This is given as a reason for the most recent financial crisis, that 
managers and all the people were just focusing on the short term, not thinking about the long term. Okay? So for example, the CEO was thinking, just make a big profit for the company this year. I'll get a big bonus this year. So we saw some of the CEOs got paid $100 million for just one year, right? They just thought, let's just focus on the profit. So not thinking about five years or 10 years later, just think about this year and next year. Make a big profit this year and next year. And don't worry about the long-term performance. So even if we are looking at financial success, this model doesn't work well. Because the company only makes the short-term profit and it can go bankrupt in the longer term. So let's look at an example here. So do you know Ford? Ford is a car company. And they made a car called a Pinto, a small car in the 70s. Okay? They wanted to compete against the foreign automakers. They were a US company. Maybe Fiat had a small car from the Italy. So they tried to do, to do accelerated production. Usually we do the product development and the tooling at different times. First we develop the product, and then we manufacture the product. Tooling is manufacturing. But they decided they need, wanted to make more profit, so they wanted to do it together. Develop the product and manufacturing at the same time. So because of this accelerated manufacturing, they had a flaw in the gas tank. Okay, if it was in a crash, even a small crash, the car would go on fire very quickly. Okay? Have you seen a movie where the car has a crash? Well, it doesn't go on fire immediately. It goes on fire after five minutes or something like that. Right? But this car had a problem. It had a crash and then the gas tank explodes. Okay? <clears throat> so then Ford made a cost-benefit analysis. They said, what's better for the company's profits? Fix the problem, or don't fix the problem, and just pay compensation to the victims. Do you understand compensation? How do you say compensation in Korean? Bosan. So pay Bosan to the victim, or to fix the problem. They found out, they did their analysis, and they said it's going to cost $45 million to pay compensation, and it's going to cost $137 million to fix the problem. Okay? So using Milton Friedman's idea, we just think about ourselves, right? Don't think about the company is just interested in making a profit. Which one are they going to choose? We don't think about anybody else. Just think about ourselves and making a profit. Okay? So which one is the company going to choose using that theory? Compensation. Pay compensation. Why? Because it takes less money. Cheaper, right? Costs less money. So they made it. Is that an ethical decision? What do you think? Our car is quite dangerous. People can die, but it costs less money. Right? Maybe they can get away with that problem in the law, but uh, they, it's an unethical idea, uh, idea. So they made the decision not to fix the flaw. A lot of people died. And in the end, it was actually a bad financial decision because their compensation was more than they thought. And also, the company got a very bad reputation. So it took them a long time to recover. Okay? So we can see that they just thought in this one, uh, thinking about the short-term profit, didn't work well for Ford. Okay? They just thought about the short-term profit. Mm, it was very bad for society, the health and safety. Some people died because they didn't fix the problem. Okay? And also, the company got the long-term problem, losing its reputation. So let's look at a company which had a long-term outlook, the opposite. Do you know Johnson & Johnson? What kind of products do Johnson & Johnson make? Lotion, right? That kind of thing. They say customers come first and shareholders last. So the opposite. For Ford, the shareholder, the owner is first. Let's make a profit. Okay? For Johnson & Johnson, the customer comes first. Okay? Customer satisfaction is at the top of the list. If we make the customer happy, then later we can make a profit. Okay? 
So this company made a long-term, very long-term uh, plan, and they had some problem, like Ford, it was kind of safety problem. They were selling some tablet, like aspirin. Do you know aspirin? Like you'd painkiller, right? Uh, Jing Tong Jie, painkiller. But the painkiller, somebody died after taking the painkiller. So Johnson & Johnson decided immediately take back all of their products. Even though they weren't sure and it cost a lot of money, they decided to immediately take back all of their products. Right? What they found out later was that this was just one store. One person put the rat poison into the box. Do you understand the rat poison? Poison? How do you say poison? And how do you say rat? Hmm? Like mouse? G. Oh, somebody put the rat poison into the. Some crazy person put rat poison into the packet and put it back in the store. Okay? So actually, it wasn't Johnson and Johnson's fault at all. And they lost a lot of money by recalling all of their painkillers. Okay? But they made that decision because they put the customers first. And they got a long term benefit by making that decision, even though it wasn't a profitable decision. Okay. So we can see this is the criticism of the neoclassical idea. <coughs> so we can look at the data, there have been studies done. If a company is committed to doing the ethical thing, doing the right thing, and social responsibility, they can get a better performance in the long term. Okay? We can't say for the short term that companies can get better financial performance, but it seems to show if the companies do that right thing, they can have a better performance in the longer term. So, the next criticism was, managers, are they bad at social issues? Okay. Freeman says, managers are not the right people to help society, because they don't have the qualification. Okay. But managers, they might not be expert, experts, but they can be okay, especially when working with other stakeholders. So the managers can talk to the NGO. NGO is a stakeholder. Okay. So for example, I'm a manager in a bank, and I have to decide to give a loan to the paper company. Do you understand paper company? So first I'm going to talk to the NGO about the forests. Do you understand forest? So there is some forestry NGO, right, for protecting the forest. So I go and I talk to them and I say, well, what's the right thing to do? And the NGO will tell me, well, don't give the loan to the paper company unless they plant one tree for every tree that they, they cut down. Okay? So the NGO has this idea. If you cut down a tree, you have to plant another tree. Okay? So the manager can talk to the NGO, even if the manager is not an expert, the manager can ask the NGO, what's the, right, what's the correct thing to do? Okay? And then the NGO can tell the manager, and then the manager in the bank will tell the paper company, okay, I'll give you a loan, but first you have to follow, you have to join the NGO. Okay? Join the NGO and follow what the NGO suggests. Of if you cut down a lot of trees without planting new trees, then we are going to stop the loan. Okay, so Ford, Ford, Ford currently have changed. Okay, they changed. Uh, they have more social and environmental goals, not just a profit goal. Okay, also society and the environment. They made some projects like Flo Ford Global Week of Caring. Okay, so a week that the company thinks about the social and environmental issues. They have four dreams for young people, educating young people. Okay? They also joined some group, Automotive Industry Action Group, to help the automotive industry to make some action together about the environment. Okay? Uh, US financial institutions and non-profit group consumer action groups have come together. So the big banks, 
they got together with NGO or also NPO, non-profit okay, organization, and they made a free financial education for people. So some people don't understand about the credit cards and the loans. Okay? So they made some clinic or seminar to let the people know about the financial products and financial education. So this is an example of managers who can work together with the NGO. And in this case, managers can do okay on social issues. Okay? So uh, let's discuss these questions with our partner. What narrow measurement does the neoclassical model suggest that managers can focus on? How does this model link profits and social welfare? And what are some criticisms of the neoclassical model? What we just discussed about. Yes? So the freeman idea is one of part of the mm -hmm. Yes. So I don't understand like, what's the thing meaning of the mm -hmm. The big meaning is this main one here, that individuals should maximize their utility. It means individuals act in their own interest. Okay? And companies maximize profits. Yeah, that's it. You guys check your name yet? Thank you. 
Just while you're finishing, uh, you can go down two slides and just click on this link, two links they can be opening. Okay, so just if you do the full screen, then you can just click on the link. Okay, and it will open. Otherwise you can do copy and paste. And two slides down. So it takes a minute for them to open, right? On the internet. Advantage. Collective advantage is improved when people uh, focus on their individual advantage. Okay. So we can say here this phrase: collective preference satisfaction is maximized. Okay. And explain this idea. In right. 